Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. This is the Bright Sun Podcast with your host, David Pierre. And today, we're talking about legs, death, and gay music. Yes, let's go. So, today, leg day. But this time, it was hamstring focus. And I've never done that before. So, by the end of it, I was feeling it more in the back than from the front. Shut up, okay? And... Doing it this time around, it's been a while since I had deadlift, but I did it with dumbbells because the barbell just gets on my nerves for some odd reason. Like, barbell is cool, I guess, but dumbbell just, just feels better. I feel like I'm just more free of motion or something. My barbell kind of keeps me in a place or always rubs around my, I mean, over my shins or something. I don't I don't like it. Or it's, it's cool, whatever, whatever, okay? But one thing that helped me when it comes to doing, like, the dumbbell deadlift i put some like small 10 5 pounds plates on my feet under my feet i mean not on and with that i'm able to get a deeper stretch cuz when you do it no matter how long your arms are your the dumbbells are going to hit the floor before you've actually really felt it or really put the muscle through enough tension so when you put the weights under your feet you get more attention before you can even rest. So that's something that really helped me with that today. And then I superseded that with the split squats. For some reason, lately, squats just haven't been my thing. I mean, I was going for numbers before on squats. I think I got to like 400, 400 and something. But it's been a while. I might get back to it. But split squats and lunges, even though I hate them, they've been doing it for me. I don't know. Maybe it's a it's a lunge error. We'll see about that. But yeah, I did some cardio beforehand. See, I'm a weirdo, and I'll run a mile or do a bunch of stairs, or I'll do, like, stairs, and then I'll run outside and come back, and I'll do... I mean, maybe that's not too crazy, I guess, whatever, but cardio's been something I've been really valuing, especially, like, you just want your heart to be better, of course, and stronger, so... And it's better to get cardio done before. Of course, some doing some after is cool, but at least for me, if I have to do all the cardio after I'm done, I'm trying to leave the gym. So that's why I superset everything in general, because I'm trying to leave the gym ASAP. I'm not trying to be there for an hour or more. I don't even want to be there for an hour. 30, 40 minutes, and I'm if I am did everything in like 40 minutes, oh, I'm so happy. Doesn't always happen like that, but I'm working on it. Gonna be working on the on the split and whatnot and the the method and the strategy. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. You know, like it's pretty cool today. I don't feel too dead from it right now, but maybe it's because it's hamstrings. I don't know. Some days hamstrings after you work them out, they're killer. And other days it's like, did, did I even work them out? So. Yeah, I guess we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, I don't cramp, but I'll be stretching soon. So make sure y'all stretch too. But yeah, I still make sure to kill myself, of course, because you gotta, like, if you don't work out without dying, I don't know what you did. I mean, of course, you don't have to get to that point, but for me, I like feeling dead after I'm done. That's how I know, like, I really push myself. Speaking of dead, let's talk about death. One thing I really realized, and I find it interesting, too, was that this isn't like a recent realization either, really. Something that like, I just remember now. And it's interesting how death and birth and how closely they are together, even if they're not like exactly the same thing. Because I think about it like this. Like, there's the cover of the book, right? That's like life. Within all that is your story of life. And the first chapter is you being born. And the last chapter is you dying. And if you believe in heaven or hell or whatever, then I guess it's like an epilogue. But for the most part, it's that. And death is something that, of course, like you ceasing to be. Like you cease to be. But you can only die if you're alive. At the same time, you can only be alive if you've been born. But you being born means that you weren't there already. 
So that relationship of death and birth has to do with you not being there. But at the same time, they have to do with you also being there as well at the same time. Because once again, you can't die without living. You can't be born into this world without not even being alive. You know? So, yeah, that's very... That's just something I think about, like, huh? The whole, like, maybe chicken, egg thing or whatnot. And it seems like when you look at your life and you think about how death is coming or is going to be there at the end of it, that you're able to... Then I think it can help, like, if you know and, like, within your heart, body, and soul that, yes, like, all this would be gone one day... Like, yeah, all this would be gone. That could either set you down a path to where by the time it is gone, you've really done something with it or you freaking go about it another way. And because of that, like you just, you know, you still do something with it, but mattering on what you do and your input and the value of the set inputs, that will affect how your life you know, like just happens or what things happen in your life or the quality of it until that point to where, you know, like there's the people that are like, oh, here for a good time, not a long time. And it's like, all right, I mean, usually that means, you know, like partying or just being impulsive or, you know, instant gratification and whatnot, which is like, it's not like it's always a bad thing. But if that if that's cons- if that if that's more consistent than the habits that build your character and build your success and build like you know meaningful goals and whatnot, life's gonna look completely different for those two people that go about those things in those different ways. You know, I'm not saying you gotta be some I guess some super strict, serious whatever. It's not that. It's about. Realizing that, that since time is of the essence, there's only so much you can do. And at the same time, when it comes to like the concept of enjoyment and whatnot, really having that check and balance to where you don't spiral into to a point where you have to look back with more regret. Because that's the thing about when you get caught up in said instant gratification and procrastination and laziness and impulsivity and whatnot is that you get you will get to a point where you're empty or you're like a slave to sad things or you look back and you don't really have much to show for yourself because those things don't nurture that. And by the time you die, of course, nothing's going to matter after that because you're dead. But at the same time, if most people have kids, meaning you most likely have a kid, that by the time you die, you want to make sure you have done enough so that, you know, your kids are continuing their lives with a great impact that you've made or, you know, that you've been able to bestow or teach them. Or, you know, you, you give an example, or maybe you break some cycles or whatnot, so that by the time you're dead, a cycle that's been continuing on won't... Of course, you can't really control that to a point, but at least, like, you did it. You know, there's, like, an action for it. But, yeah, but it's still cool, like, to enjoy things, or that's not... I think people get construed and mis... Yeah, they get it. They don't understand, like, that there's a point of, like, there is a day to sleep in and there's a many days where it's, like, you got to get up, you know? I think that's a good example of showing that sort of moderation of things. Yeah. Lately, I've been listening to, I'm not sure if I want to call it, like, gay music, but I, 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 I quite a bit... Of the artists I listen to, I say like consistent. Like their songs are of like homosexual nature. You know, I'll, there's literally a song. This guy saying, 
superstar. I want to feel you shine on me. And, you know, I'm like, damn. Like, you know, it's like, this sounds so gay, but hey, it sounds hard, though. Like, this is go, this is go crazy, but it makes me wonder why I'm like, huh, how have I stumbled upon this? Because I'm straight. I'm not saying that a straight man can't listen to gay music or, like, a gay artist. It's that I wonder how I started to, I don't even realize that. I'm like, I just gravitate towards it. Like, at least so far with the ones I've listened to, like, I like it. Even if they talk about things that I don't do or that I don't like, maybe necessarily align with. At the same time, these things aren't, of course, it's led to subjectivity, but these aren't things that, like, even I think are necessarily bad as well. So, but I don't, I'm not even sure, like, because I listen to what? There's probably like four or five or six artists I listen to that are all gay consistently. And, I think, I think it's the energy because there's like this part of them that at least they share. Looking at all of them as a looking at all of them and trying to find that connection is that they have a way with masculinity that is both masculine and feminine. Of course, they may maybe have some songs that could be considered more masculine, whatever, but they have this duality to them where they're like able to surrender in a strong way you know it's not surrendering weakness you know it's not like loving somebody and it's like sounds weak or it is weak or whatever it's like there's so strength and they have a strength about their identities as well like they walk the walk and you could tell in their music that they're not afraid of who they are and for you to see that and they have a way of storytelling or lyrics that even can also be considered usable even in other contexts, whether it be like heterosexual or maybe anything else. And they have a good way of expressing themselves without it. I don't know, but it's like they express themselves. And you don't listen to it like. I'm listening to some gay artists. It's like, no, that you just listen to like this guy expressing himself and he's so happens to be talking about a guy. So I find that very interesting. And I think that's why I like listening to it because I don't tend to find a lot of artists that have that nature that they're able to be both like gentle and at the same time assertive. Yeah, it's like it's like a mixture of that soft gentleness and that assertiveness that I think more people should have, you know, because I think we can get mixed up with masculinity, femininity, and only being one of the other instead of realizing that, let's say like if femininity is pink and masculinity is blue, we're going to be some sort of shade of purple, because we have both. It's just a matter of to what degree that that would then affect, I guess, either, you know, your actions and your energy and whatnot. So, and I think I myself, I have like that purple. That of course, is more more blue than red. I mean, more blue than pink. I said pink, huh? Okay, scratch the pink. I meant red. That I'm able to be both. I'm able to, like, have a gentleness at the same time. I'm not, like, weak or I'm not, you know, a pushover or whatnot. So I think listening to that music, I, like, relate to the energy of it. Not the messages, but the energy to it. In this kind of wholesome way that it's one way that... I'm not sure if I say represents me, but it's something that relating to shows that it's something that I'm definitely familiar with or that's something that's maybe like close. And yeah, that's it. I got to go. Time to eat dinner. Hope you have a good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. Bryson Podcast. David Pierre. Out.